Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really, really well. Today, I did not know what to film. Uh, so I asked on my Instagram and I got some good suggestions and one of them caught my eye and it was to talk about books that are like underrated or that you never hear spoken about on booktube or bookstagram and I was like okay I like that let's do that that comment was by it was books I did it again who suggested that and thank you very much books I did it again that was a great suggestion and so that is what we're doing today I've picked 10 books to talk about that I think are both kind of underrated maybe generally or specifically books that I think I never hear people talk about on booktube that I really really enjoyed and think more people should read so the way I did it I was like let's be mathematical about this let's be scientific I made a list I like just scrolled through my shelves of read books um and I chose 30 that like immediately to me felt like books that I don't hear people talk about on bookstagram or booktube that I really enjoy and that I wanted to shout about and then from there using that list of 30 I went on goodreads you might know I don't use goodreads anymore like I track my reading on storygraph but it is still the best place I find for videos about like you know average ratings or like most read least read because goodreads just has so much more data than storygraph so i used goodreads i just like searched the titles of these 30 books wrote down how many ratings they had like how many people had read them from there pick the 10 that had the least rating so yeah it's kind of like a goodreads underrated but also they were pre-selected by me as not being spoke about on booktube so i've got my 10 books here and yeah let's talk about some books that i think are super underrated but that everyone should read. I'm gonna go in like ascending order of books from like the least underrated to what I think the most underrated are and um, so we'll start using those numbers I got off Goodreads. So in spot number 10 this book had been rated 2,967 times so not like super under the radar but definitely not like massive um, and that book is Cassandra at the Wedding by Dorothy Baker. You might have heard me rave about this book. I read it about a year ago and I fell in love with it and I have been recommending it to a lot of people since then. This is a book, it was initially published in the 1960s um, and I still keep meaning to read more Dorothy Baker. I said that as soon as I read this book I was like I want to read more by her and I'm still yet to um, but it's such a contemporary feeling book for the fact it was written in the 1960s. Like I would compare this to a Tessa Moshberg in a way, that kind of really sharp, acerbic kind of writing that's really popular at the minute with certain types of millennial fiction. So the plot of Cassandra at the wedding is that we follow Cassandra and Judith who are twins. We mainly follow Cassandra um, and you might also know about me that I love books about twins. And Cassandra is going home for the weekend because Judith, her twin sister, is getting married. So they live in a kind of like ranch house in California and she's been at university and we get the vibes very strongly that she's really struggling. She's not happy. She has a lot of self-loathing. She's not treating herself very well. And she clearly has like pretty conflicting feelings about Judith getting married. She's not happy about it at all. She hasn't ever met the guy yet. Um, and to her, it feels like a huge betrayal that her twin would leave her. So she goes back to the house where their father is and their grandmother, um, they lost their mother when they were younger. And we follow the kind of couple of days leading up to Judith's wedding and Cassandra basically trying to, on the one hand, self-destruct, on the other hand, kind of destroy the wedding. And it's really, really funny in a like, black humour way. As I say, it really has that kind of mosh -fegian, really unlikable characters. The descriptions are quite gritty and visceral. Like there's no kind of hiding behind the fact that Cassandra is maybe not the best person, but then also as the book goes on, we learn a bit more about why she's like that and this relationship that her and Judith have that is so, so central to Cassandra and so important to her and how it makes her feel that something is kind of jeopardizing that bond and that they're not just always going to be the two of them. One of the reasons I love twin books is because I think exploring that relationship, like the closest relationship really you can have with another human, and some might argue, um, is kind of explored. And I just thought the writing in here was just amazing, like so definitely like restrained, but there was definitely beauty to it. I really, really loved it. I love the ending. Um, and yeah, it's just an absolutely brilliant book. The cover is stunning. I really think so many people would like this and especially if maybe you're looking for books that were published in the 20th century, but you're into kind of millennial fiction, I really think you'd like this book. So next up with 2,232 ratings, we have Nothing Can Hurt You by Nicola May Goldberg. I read this book earlier this year um, and I picked it up because I thought it was gonna be like a thriller, just like classic thriller. I love me a thriller. Um, the description kind of made it sound like that because it talks about the fact that in 1997 a college student was killed in the woods her boyfriend confessed um 
and like kind of pleaded temporary insanity but it says in the aftermath of his acquittal the case comes to haunt a strange and surprising network of people and I don't like to read too much into the blurbs of my thrillers because I don't want to get any spoilers but I thought I was having a fairly standard thriller experience it's actually not what this book is this book is a series of interconnected short not short stories but like chapters every chapter in here is from the perspective of a different woman who is somehow tangentially or much more closely linked to this case where this girl died um and then in this small town and then the boyfriend confessed but now he's out of prison and um, and it looks at just such an array of different people so we follow people who actually knew sarah um the first chapter which is one of my favorites is from the perspective of the woman who ends up finding her body um who is in a experiencing like extreme anxiety and living in the middle of nowhere with her husband so we get kind of parts of that character aside from the way that they're related to this um case but also each chapter allows us to learn a bit more about the case so we get i'm a journalist who reports on it as i say people who know sarah people who know people who know sarah i thought that like individually the stories the chapters were really really strong like i say exploring a, a wider kind of issues and they were very short time frame so they looked at a character really really closely which is the kind of short fiction that i like a kind of dark case study this book is very dark it definitely looks at kind of the impact of male violence again because of the case but also just the threat of that is in every other chapter and is so insidious and so eerie in the way that it does that so i really really enjoyed that part of it and we don't really get any answers so we do kind of explore people who are linked to blake her boyfriend who confessed and um, who've known him in the aftermath and there's certainly questions that are pulled up for us about what may or may not have happened to Sarah, but it's not about giving us the answers, it's about looking at a kind of mosaic effect of impact, about the effects of these things on people, character studies, as they say. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I think I've actually thought about it a lot since I finished it. I think maybe because I went into it expecting something different, it didn't quite, that kind of threw me off, but I really enjoyed this. And I think if you're someone who does like thrillers or someone who likes true crime or someone who likes reading about you know media circuses around crime if you're interested in topics of male violence i think this would be such a good recommendation for people who watch my videos okay number three with 1465 ratings so we're in the 1000s now is 26a by diana evans unfortunately this cover is horrible but the, the inside of it is brilliant diana evans novel um ordinary people was a much bigger deal it was on the women's prize shortlist um, and so i read that book first and i loved it to the point where i was like i need to read anything else she's written and so I found this novel 26a and I've never heard anyone talk about it but I really liked it also just realized this is another twin book this book follows a family um the father is white the mother is from Ghana but they moved to kind of like they moved to London that's where they raised their family they have I think four girls two of whom are twins um, and we kind of really follow the twins but we do also follow their sisters and just like this family it's set in like the 80s like the 80s 90s going forward because we follow these twins over quite a large space of time and again it, it, there's not like a really central plot it's uh much more about it's a family drama and it does look at the kind of that push and pull between twins between these twin sisters but also their other sisters um as kind of london changes they move to ghana for a while when their children then they come back it is a very londony novel as ordinary people was um but yeah it's a real like coming of age story but not particularly for the twins but then also they have like an older sister and a younger sister and so we explore different parts of that through them and um, their parents do not have a very happy marriage that's a big part of it and yeah basically them trying to find their way in the world whilst also trying to keep that bond alive one of the si one of the twin sisters is a lot more troubled than the other one um, and this book is really really heartbreaking in its portrayal of her mental health issues and her struggles um it's some of the most kind of poignant writing about that that i've read it really got you in the mind of it and in a very raw and painful way uh and it's just ultimately like such a heartbreaking but beautiful like family portrait and although it's not a happy ending you see the growth of those characters you see how they love each other the moments they realize how badly they failed each other and the writing's just really beautiful diana evans has this like almost 
ethereal magical sense like nothing magical happens but that's really there in the writing and oh it's just such a beautiful book i would really really recommend it if you like kind of family dramas or if you like those sort of a bit more plotless but really interestingly written coming of age female stories read this okay number four with 1273 ratings i have after the fire a still small voice by evie wilde evie wilde is one of my favorite authors she is an australian british writer and this book is set in australia it's her debut novel i've loved all three of her novels this is the last one that i read and i think it's definitely the one that's got the least attention but i think it really i think you'd really enjoy it as a standalone but also i think if you've read other of her books this just kind of expands on like your understanding of her as a writer if that makes sense because each book does something quite different but they all have a lot of commonality so in this book it's a kind of dual timeline story which does have some kind of interconnectivity one about a boy called leon who is a teenager he lives with his parents who own a bakery and that's around the time of kind of the korean war and so we get his life before then and then he is conscripted and he fights in the korean war and that's kind of a big part of Leon's timeline we see him before that during that and after that and then the other timeline is this man called Frank who we really don't know much about he's living in a kind of shack um in very very rural Australia uh there is a small community there but he's kind of come back there he has some family connection to it he's living a very solitary life he doesn't really want to mix with people but he does end up kind of mixing with a few of the people in the community and during that timeline something really bad happens and so we see it through Frank's perspective um but something doesn't quite seem right there's again a lot of like eeriness something Evie Wilde does very well and, and you're not sure how reliable Frank is as a narrator and you're not really sure what the potential relationship if any there is between the story we're hearing about Leon and then what we're hearing about Frank um, and I don't want to say any more than that this isn't a book that's going to give you loads of answers it's not a big mystery to be solved but you certainly find things out things become apparent um during the course of the novel for me I love Evie Wilde's settings she likes really brutal landscapes really unforgiving environments so in this case obviously like Korea in the jungle during a war but then also like Australia the baking heat the isolation um the way the communities are because of where they are she writes about nature so so beautifully particularly in the Frank parts because he does have this really as I say like isolated existence where he is by himself a lot and he is in his daily routines he's also very troubled um and I love the relationships in here just particularly like Leon and his father that's a big journey for that character Frank and this person who I won't say who who he meets in this community um and there's a lot there's a real undertone of like threat and darkness and violence in here and you're always on the back foot which I love because I'm, I'm like never quite sure what's going on but then there's also some really like beautiful depictions of relationships um and yeah this was just quite special I haven't really read anything that like this before and I think if you like um if you like nature writing if you like a dual timeline if you like those books where you're unnerved and it's dark but you you want it to be a bit open-ended then read this okay number five halfway through we're in the below a thousand hours this has 822 ratings and it is Eve Out of Her Ruins by Ananda Devi again this is a book that I have raved about I read it last year and it just absolutely blew my mind uh it's a piece of translated fiction it's translated from the French and Ananda Devi is a Mauritian author so the book takes place in Mauritius and we follow a young female protagonist Eve who is living in a very deprived part of the country it's a lot about the kind of social issues in Mauritius we get Eve's perspective but we also get the perspective of a young boy um and through that it is mainly about Eve but through that we see it's a very it's a book about struggle and suffering a hundred percent um and it is a book very much about male violence I would check trigger warnings for this because it's really brutal and it's really disturbing um eve is a, as i say a young female character she's a teenager she has a terrible terrible family life she has so much suffering and she's kind of checked out of that and she is not exactly a sex worker it's not really what it, it's in a bit more of a casual way than that but she's basically kind of giving up her autonomy as a way of standing up against the male violence and like the patriarchal society the misogyny um so it is really like arresting and like i say disturbing but also then we follow a male character and we see the way that as i always say like the patriarchy helps no one we see the the machismo and how that affects his life but really eve is like the star of this she's such a powerful character i don't want to talk about the plot too much because it's a really short book but something big does happen 
and through that Eve kind of goes through a bit of a an evolution um and this book is so like I say quite violent very disturbing it also has again beautiful descriptions of Mauritius and moments where Eve or even her best friend are alone kind of away from the male space and away from male interference these gorgeous beautiful descriptions and a lot of kind of true kind of contentment and and peace but then surrounded by so much violence and um, it just like I say completely took my breath away I cannot recommend it more it's also really interesting in the translator's note about the way that Ananda Devi kind of writes in French but she also speaks English and she also speaks kind of Mauritian patois and how much really goes into the language of it which I found really interesting although I can't like experience all those elements of it um and I'd say if you like I'd say if you enjoy um like the character of Leela from Ferrante's Nate Poulter novels there's there's a certain amount of similarity there with with Eve um and yeah if you think this is something that you would be okay with reading please do because it's just amazing okay number six so we're down into the top five now of most underrated with 476 ratings i have apple and knife by insan parmadita this is a collection of short stories translated from indonesian and i think this would be such a like booktube book scrub book because i feel like a genre that does do quite well is um fairy tale retellings kind of feminist short stories sorry my camera just died yeah i feel like um people tend to like fairy tale retellings people tend to like kind of feminist short stories takes on history and that's exactly what this is this takes such a wide look at kind of myth folklore fairy tales from across the world obviously there is a lot of kind of indonesian southeast asian stories but they're set all over the world you know like there's greek inspired ones it really encapsulates so many different things um and it's kind of some fairy tales that you would recognize some that you might not which i think is always kind of a fun experience if you're into kind of like myth and lore and that kind of thing um but as i say the sort of central thing about it is they're very feminist and they're again very very dark and violent and um, they often take on a kind of supernatural like gothic horrory feel to them which i enjoyed but yeah they very much place women at the center or look at the effects of male violence i mean it's a, it's a topic that's coming up a lot it is something that does i do tend to read about but i really enjoyed the way it was done through this like very surreal very kind of flamboyant often i loved beauty and the seven dwarf was so strange um, and the porcelain doll was my favorite one these stories are very eerie they're very kind of visual i think like vividly described and i just think if you're looking for say if you've read i don't know like carmen maria machado or jen campbell or you want like the dark version of loving color by bolu babalola where she's taking like loads of different myths and legends she's made them into romance if you want to read like the supernatural dark version any of those i think you'd really enjoy apple and knife next up is the only book that i don't have with me and it is actually like a series because i wrote the first one down and then i was like oh i bet the second one has even less than that and that is turning blue and these darkening days by benjamin myers so turning blue is the first crime novel benjamin myers is the author of the offing the gallows pole he's written like a lot of like historical fiction and kind of dark contemporary fiction but this is his kind of crime series and um, the mason brindle series i think it's called and turning blue is one of the darkest books that i've read or crime books so the first book i really don't want to give any spoilers in the first book like a body is found in the middle of winter in west yorkshire it's very like it's all snowy um it's very isolated and a police officer is sent to investigate it who has a lot of his own issues i really like when the kind of detective personality is interesting and i actually can't remember if it's mace or brindle the other one is a journalist who he meets and they kind of start working together to solve it but the policeman has a lot of like really interesting kind of issues that i hadn't read before in a crime book and they end up having a relationship these two men that maybe is more than just professional and i thought that was really interesting but yeah the actual crime in this book is super super dark and effed up uh a lot of people i know who've read it had to put it down like had nightmares were like i don't want to read that um but it's kind of inspired by jimmy savile or at least that kind of organized um systematic like childhood abuse so don't go into this lightly but if you think you're always looking for something more dark i mean do it but yeah don't come back to me and be like why did you make me read all of that disgusting stuff like i, I warned you but as i say benjamin Mize is such a talented writer it doesn't feel gratuitous i think if you liked like karen slaughter but with a more like folksy yorkshire like very english attitude and way of writing you'd really like this and then the second one these darkening days is 
I think one of the best twists I've read in a crime book. Um, in this one, it's set in another Yorkshire town and basically women are being attacked. There's a very like specific attack that's happened to a couple of women in the town. And again, Mason Brindle investigate. And I don't wanna say anymore because I don't give spoilers, but if this is one of my crime people, uh, because they are so, so underrated, if you feel like you wanna read something a bit different, maybe really would recommend it because he's such a brilliant writer. And I think they're very original if disturbing books. Oh, and I should say, they had, so Turning Blue had 453 ratings and These Darkening Days has 257. Okay, so then 408 ratings is The Language of Birds by Jill Dawson. I love this book. I can't believe this book is as underrated as it is because it just has so much that I think people would enjoy and I absolutely loved it. This was a five star for me, one of my favourite books of 2019. This book is a kind of retelling or is inspired by The Lord Lucan Affair, which is basically where this guy in England who was like a very privileged man in the 1970s his nanny ended up being murdered he then ran away that night and there's loads of conspiracy theories about it that he did it that he didn't do it most people think he did it um, and that then he just killed himself but there's literally so many conspiracy theories theories you can find on the internet sightings of him like in the 90s like living on a beach in Goa it was a big like story in the press and kind of in the collective mind's recent history of English kind of crime um, and so the author reimagines this but we follow two young women who moved to London in the summer of 1974 to be nannies they both have had difficulties in their lives they're young but moving to London seems like freedom for them it seems like opportunity possibility and they kind of strike up this friendship one of them goes to work for this reimagined Lord Lucan and or really his wife and the other girl gets another nannying job and we follow this summer kind of knowing that by the end of it, one of these girls will be killed. But the way that I think Jill Dawson has taken a, you know, quite a salacious like story, like as I say, it's, it's one of those like, oh, I wonder what happened to Lord Lucan and really made it like about the women and not only the women, the working class women, the people who were in these privileged people's houses kind of raising their children and, you know, and really interrogating like the class system in England, particularly when you're looking at these like glamorous privileged people, but the actual you know like the upstairs downstairs thing of like who was running the show and it's really really beautiful with their friendship it's really sad obviously and um, again it has a kind of a magic to the writing a kind of beauty one of the girls has a very like ethereal outlook on life um and so there is that kind of coming of age first flush of freedom and these girls spending it together and making these kind of like magical memories but also there's like such anger in this book like i say about the fact that this man could take that away from them about the situations they were put into um, and it's just so good like if you like books that are inspired again by true crime coming of age stories female friendship like female rage it's really really good like a kind of historic not really historical because the 1970s honestly read this because it's being slept on so much um, and i absolutely love it oh that was number three so that was the top three number three in second place with 378 ratings, I have Self Portrait in Green by Marina Dye. I read this book recently. It's super, super short, as you can see. Um, and this, I'd say, is a little bit more, maybe a bit more niche than a lot of these books. Like, I can maybe see why it's had less ratings. Also, it was only published last year. It's published by an indie by Influx Press. This is another piece of translated fiction, translated from French. And it's a very surreal, very strange novella about a woman living in France who starts seeing this kind of green woman and she's not sure if it's real or not um and so through that we explore like various parts of her life um everything in this book is strange nothing quite seems right it's really hard to get your head around what's really going on and I think more so it's about the writing which is extremely poetic and very lyrical as I say very surreal um but also about these sort of anecdotal it's very like anecdotal because you don't really know what's going on but then you'll be being told about our main characters a relationship with their sisters or a particular memory um or going to visit her dad in Wagadougou with his new family um who live in Burkina Faso um or their own relationship with their daughter or then a friend they once had who something happened and they then passed that story on it's just very dark again very kind of like unnerving it's very like dreamlike and i think it's a lot about like obsession about identity about kind of memory and paranoia it's very unsettling but it is just really not like anything i've read before um and the writing was really strong 
and then the more I thought about it the more I was thinking about it and what could it mean it felt like a little a book that you kind of want to puzzle out um but with some really really striking memorable scenes in here so if that sounds like something you like I'm sure I've been trying to do like a if you like this then this is one you should read for all of these books. But with this, it's a bit more difficult. If you like super, super surreal, dreamlike, almost stream of consciousness type novels, and it is little, so it's not like too taxing to kind of suspend that for a while, because sometimes I don't love that style, but in such a short time, this really worked for me, and I'd really recommend it. Now, number one, the most underrated book, according to me and Goodreads, um, and I definitely agree, I wish more people were reading this book, it's The Ant Hill by Julianne Pacheco. I think this book was unfortunately messed up by the pandemic. This was meant to come out. I have a proof copy from early 2020 um, and it was due for release May 2020. They pushed it to 2021 and I'm not sure when it came out. I think maybe May or something, but I never heard, I've not heard one person talk about it when it came out this year, which is such a shame because this is such a good novel. Um, it's published by Faber and I think so many people would love it. So this book follows a woman called Lena who was born in Colombia, lived there with her parents um, and she had this like best friend who was a boy a similar age to her but then she left Colombia because of kind of political unrest and it wasn't deemed safe so she grew up with her dad in England kind of going to boarding schools and that kind of thing. 20 years later she's come back to Colombia, she reached out, got back in touch with Mateus who was this like childhood best friend who stayed in Colombia um, and he now runs this youth group called the Ant Hill which is yeah a place for like children to come after school to be cared for, activities, that kind of thing. So she goes to Colombia um, and she wants to volunteer there and she wants to like strike back up this amazing friendship that they had. Um, this is such a gothic book, like when she starts, when she gets the Ant Hill weird stuff starts happening and we go between the present timeline where there's some children who are acting very strangely freaking her out um her best friend is acting kind of strangely to her she feels very unsettled she feels very in an odd position because she feels colombian and has, has felt that connection but actually being back there it's kind of looking at well how much is this actually her home and how much of it has she now become like that white tourist that british tourist how much how much has she kind of picked up on that from being away from it um and that's really interesting particularly in terms of like the political situation in colombia and its recent history and the way that people like conceptualize it whether you live there or whether you don't but then we also get these memories that she had when she was a child um, and her relationship with mateus and it's just so gothic and unnerving but also I loved read I love reading books set in Colombia. It's all about kind of memory. And yeah, as I say, definitely about this kind of idea of like a self-created identity, but also this book is all about memory and the unreliableness of it. And all of these issues are like explored through this like gothic weird plot. And it was just such a good book. Like I really think so many people would like it about like a young female protagonist, you know, returning to the place that she grew up, identity, but then creepiness and memory. It's just read it, okay, please. Just, just read this book because I feel really sad that it didn't get the attention I think it deserved. Okay, well, they are my top 10 underrated books. Please do let me know how many of them you've read and then whoever's read the most of them will win in my comments and I'll pin you or something. Or let me know if any of these sound interesting to you, what books you think are really underrated on booktube. I'd love to know. Let's chat in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Obviously, I would love if you subscribed. My Instagram, my story graph will be linked down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.